Okay, so next we have to review MPLST tunnel setup process using the packet capture on the R3 FAST00 interface. So we're going to be running a packet capture right here on this interface. So first we need to set up a span port. R3 is connected to your switch. So right here, there's a switch and that's port FAST03. So let's hop over to our switch. And we have a our computer right here, plug into a switch as well. Then we're going to be running Wireshark on. So that would be our port uh, FAST024. So we need to set up a monitor session real quick. Session one, source interface FAST03. And for the destination, interface FAST024. And let me bring up Wireshark, select the interface. Kind of let it run. You can see that we're seeing some ISIS packets already. So I'm spanning tree. So now let's force the tunnel to go through the establishment process one more time by doing a shut, no shut. So on router one, let's do a shut. And then actually let me uh, restart since it's kind of flooded with the packets already just to make it easier. So continue without saving and then do a no shut real quick. Okay, so you can see some RSVP packets right here. So let me stop that. And our tunnel is currently up again. So now let's go through what we are seeing on the Wireshark. Okay, so the other packet is just noise. So I'm going to go ahead and filter and then just concentrate on these two packets right here with the RSVP. So I can use the IP protocol filter, uh, display filter equal 46 because that's the IP protocol number for a RSVP. So apply, you can see now we are down to just two packets. Now let's go through the content of those packets just to see that if we can get a better understanding of, of uh, what's going on behind the scene here. You can see IP protocol, and this is going between a loopback of router R1 to R2. So it goes end to end basically. And as far as DSCP, the RSVP packet is marked with a CS6, okay, class selector six. Protocol obviously is RSVP. We already know that the IP protocol number is 46. Okay, so let's move over to the RSVP header. Here is the header itself. It tells that type of the message is path message. And this is what we saw when we did the show MPLS command with the statistic output. So it's a path message with the TTL of the 255. Okay, the session and the destination is obviously it's the R2 loopback zero. Tunnel ID is one. And this is the hop information as far as where the packet is coming from. So just remember we are capturing it at the R3 fast zero zero facing R1. So the packet that we're seeing is going this way. So you can see the neighbor address is 13.1 and that's the router R1 IP. It's got time information here, explicit routes, and this is how the packet knows exactly what router it has to hop through. So the head end router, which is R1's figure it out exactly as part of the path calculation based on the information it receives in the ISIS database and it's figure out, okay, these are the hops that the packet has to go through. So first it's router R3, R2, and the R2 loopback where the packets terminates. Okay, it's also sent a label request. As I mentioned, the RSVP is used to distribute the MPLS label. And here's the session attributes ties to the tunnel itself. So you can see the setup priority is seven, the whole priority is seven, which is something we already saw on the show command output. And again, the name of the session is R1 T1. And it's not much to see the standard template with the standard T spec. This is where the bandwidth is specified. So you can see uh, it's a, 65, a 62 500, but you can see it's, it's in bytes per second. So you have to multiply that by eight and what you get is 500 kbps. Okay, and that's how the bandwidth information gets communicate downstream from the head end router to the tail end router. So the intermediate router in the middle knows exactly how much bandwidth it needs to reserve on the outgoing interface. Okay, and there's um, uh, AD spec, which is less interesting. So we're not going to go through that. All right, next we're going to look at packets that's coming back from the tail end router. So it's the path packet that goes from or downstream, if you will. So that would be path. and then for the packets coming back, and that's upstream from, not R7, sorry, it's R2 right here. That will be uh, RESP, okay? And 
that particular packet is right here. You can see the type of packet is RESV message. And from the IP header, it's one interesting to, thing to see. This is a basically a hop by hop type of uh, packets. As you can see that it didn't really, uh, the source of IP is not really a R2 loopback zero as we might have expected. It's actually coming from or originated from R3 itself. That's going towards R1. Okay, so the packet is sent just for that particular layer three hops. And message type is RESV. Since we, as we already know, session is the same. It's just basically a duplicate of what we saw on the path message. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go through that quickly. What we are really want to pay attention at is right here, label 37. So it looks like this time, this uh, the router R1 is gonna be using a label 37 when it sends packet to R3 as part of that TE tunnel. Okay, so that's how the MPLS label gets communicated from the downstream routers or the tail end routers to the head end routers. Okay, now just to verify that is the case, we can go back to R1 and then do show MPLS traffic engineering. Uh, no need for IP there in the front. So show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel. As you can see right here, the output label is 37. All right, so just by looking at the Wireshark packet capture of the RSVP packets, it pretty much tells us quite a bit of information as far as what's going on when the tunnel is set up. And that's pretty much complete our task number two. Okay, so what we have accomplished so far in this lab videos is enabling MPLS uh, t traffic engineering supports in our network, and that includes the underlying routing protocol for us in this lab is ISIS, and we also enable that on the MPLS itself. And we also create a very simple uh, traffic engineering tunnel as well with the pretty much minimal config. And then we went through a bunch of show commands and then look at the packet captures of the RSVP uh, tunnel setup packet. So at this point, we should have a pretty good understanding of how the MPLS traffic engineering operates. So over the next few videos, we're gonna start getting a little fancy and see how much control we have with uh, setting up the traffic path for the MPLS channel to route your traffic. Okay, so that wraps up our video on MPLS TE basic traffic engineering. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to initial lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.